have Coach Yo. Coach Yolette McEwen joining us today, the head coach at Ole Miss University. Oh my goodness, Coach Yo, <laughs> you are on Christie's Court on the Field of 68 Network, and we are thrilled to welcome you. Just really glad to be here. You know, it's crazy that you can set up uh, things like this through Twitter now. I said, no. <laughs> I know. I, I slid into your, uh, your DMs and I was like, hey, coach. Uh, but, but wow, what a journey you have been on uh, just throughout your career. But take us back to what started it for you. What ignited the passion that you have and the compassion yeah. that you have for the game and the integrity that you put behind it. I mean, it's palpable. I, I've seen you coaching on the sidelines and talking to your staff and, and just really bringing out the best in everyone yeah. around. Well, I think it's just from my roots, you know, I was, I'm a, uh, I migrated over here. So I'm, I'm, I'm an immigrant. Uh, I was born and raised in the Bahamas and I think I got it from my parents. My mom was a principal for 20 plus years and my dad was my high school coach. So I've, I've watched my mom in high school taking, you know, pregnant teens when their parents kicked them out. Wow. I've watched her, you know, mentor younger teachers as they were coming up in the profession. And then I watched my dad do the same uh, in, in his ministry uh, through coaching. Sure. So I think that's what I did. I love how you said your ministry through coaching or his ministry through coaching, but, but you have a ministry through coaching as well. I'm a PK. I, I ah, get it. I, ah. I get it. And, and Hey, listen, there, <laughs> there is something to be said for the leadership of a flock, right? Oh, yeah, um, whether it's, whether it's church or athletics or business, but that connection oh. that you have, what was it like? Number one, playing for your dad, yeah. And what kind of philosophy did he give you that you are carrying through right now? Well, it, it was it was tough playing for, for my dad because he only started coaching uh, girls because of me. So my dad is like a Hall of Fame coach in the Bahamas, but he, he got all his stripes from the men's side. Wow. And, yeah, and so when he found out that I played, he came over and started being there for me. So it was tough, but it was great at the same time. My, my dad, I get my charm from him. You know? <laughs> uh, really, really a lot of my, you know, character building stuff's from my mom. Like just, she's just so, she's tough and, you know, made me earn everything. Um, between the both of them, it was really a team effort. Like people don't know this, but I used to get up and wake my dad up five o'clock every morning to go work out on the outside court in the right. Bahamas, you know? And so the discipline, the skill, uh, the humility, the understanding to be philanthropic, that's from both of my parents. That's so funny that you said it was tough to play for your dad, but you're waking him up at yeah. 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just had that hunger, you know, like I just, right. You know, I grew up the only child, so like I just this was something that I found to be passionate about. And and my parents told me early on, if you're gonna do something, then you need to try to be the best that you can be in it. Oh my goodness. And and that is holding true yeah. to this day. That is holding true to this day. When you finished play mm -hmm. and decided that you still want to stay connected to the game, yeah. what was that decision like? And how did you get into coaching? Yeah, quick story. My um, so I on my staff, I have I hired a chief of staff that is my college coach. So my uh -huh. college coach is on my staff currently from Rhode Island. She's the one. I did I didn't want to be a coach. Well, I wanted to be a CEO. So I was always business minded. You know, I I would deliver newspapers in the summer just to make a quick buck. You know, so she said, you know what, you need to get into coaching, and she hooked me up. God rest her soul with Betty James. Betty oh, yeah. James got me into So You Want to Be a Coach. Yes, uh, 17 yes. years later, I'm the head coach at Ole Miss, and I'm hiring my college coach. So, Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that story, I just got chills down my arm. Yeah. I love that story yeah. so much. And, and I'm, a, I'm a CEO now because that's what yeah. this is. There is a business side to this so that I have to run. So, 
I'm no doubt. <laughs> Absolutely. Living the dream for sure. And, and setting the dreams on fire yeah. for so many. And, you know, you went on to a Jacksonville mm-hmm. and you won the Atlantic Sun Conference. You, you did so well there. Yeah. But that one year, 2015, 16, ah. when, you know, my guy, Carl Semesco <laughs> at the Florida Gulf Coast, we coached at, at Maryland together back in the day. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, that's my guy. So I, I know, you know, what kind of program he ran. And I mean, seven years where they were undefeated, like at, at home. And yeah. you went in there and and tore that all up yeah. and threw it all, threw it on the floor. <laughs> I went in there. I went in there with my slingshot. You know, I went in there with my slingshot. Uh, I, we were David for sure because they they uh, uh, creme la creme and people people. I don't know that people understand that. Like yeah. what, what Carl has built at Florida Gulf Coast uh, is incredible, and uh, I think I'm the only coach that. I'm trying to think that it's like I beat him three times and yeah. I don't know anybody else <laughs> because he's been killing. So, yes, you know, yes. and a lot of our sparring and matchups him and, mm-hmm. and even Limbria at Stetson and, and now the coach that's at South Dakota, she was at Northern Kentucky and they were in the conference. Those right. coaches have helped me tremendously mm. in here in the SEC. I, I believe it. And, you know, you had a stint at Pitt and also at yeah. Clemson before yeah. that. I've been all and over. I, I love it, though. <laughs> I love it, though. You, and you've planted those seeds with those student athletes. And just uh, walk us through you as a player at mm-hmm. Rhode Island. And you finished in, in 2004. Yeah. But walk, walk us through your mentality as a student athlete coming in, you know, for the two years that you were there. Yeah. What is it like to flash back to that time and really see yourself in your current team? And how do you help walk them through their journey that they're on with you now? Yeah, you know, um, because of the culture I was raising, we're already prideful people. And uh, so I always was overconfident. Uh, I'm, I'm at a at true form an overbeliever. Um, that's just who I am to the core. You know, and so when I was at Rhode Island, there was an adjustment phase that I had to make. And and Coach Bo was extremely tough. You know, like you can't even be tough like she was back in the day because so much has changed mm-hmm. since then. You know, um, there, I, she couldn't make it in that climate, <laughs> in this climate. <laughs> uh, you know, right. the old school coaches. Um, but uh, she... She really instilled this a lot, continued on instilling discipline and taught me how to be resilient. And uh, that's one thing I talked to my players about. But even though I'm 17 years or more removed, I try to just explain to them that I play too. I understand what you're going through. And I try to be transparent. Um, I try to meet them halfway, you know, and, and I, I over communicate with my team. Right. No, they, right. they know why I'm doing things. They know why they're in trouble. They know why they're not playing. They know why I'm happy. They know why I'm sad. Like they always know. Whereas yeah. we came up in the generation, we, our parents didn't have to tell us. Our coach didn't have to tell us. Right. Um, I have two little girls and they always want to know why, you know? So, <laughs> so I take that with our players and and I, I make them understand that it is a partnership because I truly believe that. You know, yes. And when you say Bo, you're talking Bo Pierman. Yeah, she was at Maryland. She was my coach. Shut your mouth. Uh huh. <laughs> she was the assistant coach. No with, way. With Chris Weller, my entire time there. And when you said Coach Bo, and then the discipline and all of that, I was like, "That's oh totally my God. her." She's here That's with her. me. Is she? I. You know what? I, I'm. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I'm just having a moment. We're both having a moment. We're both we're right having now. a moment. <laughs> <laughs> but my gosh, yes. It's that time of year again, folks. Conference tournaments are tipping off. Bubble teams are making their final push for a bid, while the best teams in the country are gearing up for a deep run. Auto bids will be punched. Slippers will be fit. And our partners at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook, are putting my listeners at the center of the action. 
if you bet four dollars on an underdog in a select game this week and that underdog wins you win 256 dollars that's right 256 dollars here's how it works download the app now and use the promo code field 68 when you sign up scroll through the list and select the underdogs bet four dollars on them to win and cash $256 will come your way when they do. There's no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge to use than to put your money where your mouth is. DraftKings Sportsbook, it's safe, it's secure, it's reliable, and you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So remember, that's code FIELD68. That's FIELD68 to turn your $4 into $256 for a limited time only, and you must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DraftKings.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And now back to our interview. Awesome. Perfect. God. So I, I understand that. Um, that that discipline and and the confidence that it takes to be resilient yeah. right and and what that what that entails but wow okay let's yeah. let's, 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 uh, let's get back on task but you you were speaking of your two daughters and yeah. to be a recruiter you have to go into the homes of these student athletes and you have to connect with the parents yes. and being a parent how, how does that coincide, like being a parent and then going into a home and speaking to parents? Oh, I, I think I'm a better coach because of it. You know, when, when you don't have kids, and this is no knock on any coaches that don't, but, right. and so usually what balances it out if a coach has been doing it a long time, but there's something about being a mom. And uh, so even when players, sometimes I, I may get calls from that are and I just tell them like hey you're talking from a parent's perspective right now so I want to let you know that I understand Um, right let me talk to you from a coach's perspective right and and I'm very truthful I'm very truthful when I speak with them because Mm -hmm. I need people if they're going to come to Ole Miss they need to come because of of straight transparency Yes. I don't want them to be surprised. You know, so like my my players know that when I'm on the floor, I curse. I don't curse at them, but I'm going to curse. You know, like the parents know that. No one's alarmed when they hear that. You know, they they know I'm intense, but they know when I get off the court, I'm auntie or coach, (laughs) whatever whatever I need to be for them at that moment. Uh, You know, and so... Parents want to know, are you going to take care of my child? Mm-hmm. Uh, are they going to have an opportunity? Are you going to help them grow? Right. And right. so, you know, that's something that I'm passionate about doing, even more about winning. Like I said, this is my ministry as well. So this is how I get to show thanks uh, for the big guy for, you know, taking care of me and giving me this platform. Absolutely. No doubt. I mean, I, I'm so inspired right now just <laughs> speaking to you and, and hearing your voice. And it's just been amazing to to watch you continue to evolve. I mean, after the five seasons at, at Jacksonville and then now here at Ole Miss, I mean, it's been a turnaround from oh this God. season and 11 and 11 record and really a strong case yeah. elect for getting into the NCAA tournament. You have been vocal about that yeah. and other people and other people have gotten on board and and they've also been vocal about yeah. your chances. But looking at your resume, I don't know what keeps you out. Is that, it was, it, listen, this is a COVID year. I understand that. And people could say, oh, well, then that's the only reason why. Yeah, well, if this wasn't a COVID year, we would even have a stronger case. I have right. the 10th youngest team in the country. We only play 22 games. We usually play 29, right? Okay, yes. so, so what I'm saying is right now, my team would have only been, we would have been in February. Yeah. So, so like, we're just playing our best, like we're primed and cued to play our best basketball with our young team. We beat our Arkansas team that beat UConn. Yeah. You know, yeah. we lose to Tennessee at Tennessee by one. 
you know, we're beating Tennessee by eight in my post player uh, from the DMV, shout out to DMV, uh, yeah. gets a hit pointer and can't go. And we still have a chance to win the game. Like we beat Kentucky. Wow. I mean, Kentucky, uh, we, Alabama, these teams are in and we're in the best conference, arguably. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm biased. But but the numbers show our net is extremely high. Yes. We don't have any bad losses. And and we're fun to watch. Yes, you are. Come on, let us <laughs> yes, get in. Are. We'll shake that thing up. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much, man. Hey, in the in the SEC tournament, you just talked about it. You you beat Arkansas and just put together a complete game. Right. And, it wasn't and, like a one point win, like on the buzzer. Oh. No. No, you know what I mean, and that's a good team. <laughs> that's a great team, yeah. And you guys, I mean, you guys are a great team. I mean, you have two players mm-hmm. averaging in double figures, yeah. But you guys play some serious defense, like mm-hmm. you don't play around on the defensive side. Uh, I get that, <laughs> you know. Like, I listen, I, I tell Joni, I said, Man, I admire you so much because you wear your heels and stuff like that. But for me, like, I need to be able to get in the defensive stance with my school. I can't do that in the dress, baby. You know, so I don't know that even after COVID season, this may have to be my, because I need to be able to move and shake with my team, you know, and they feed off of it and they love it. <laughs> That's so good. So uh, did you try to get in the defensive stance when you wore the heels before COVID? I did, and, and I did, and, and my toes did not, were not happy about that. And, you know, um, at halftime, I have a pair of slippers. My manager's running, give it to me before I walk down the hall. <laughs> now I can just walk down the hall. I, I, you know, I just, I love it. You know, I understand why baseball players and football coaches don't wear suits on the sideline. You right. know, I understand why um, Musselman at Arkansas doesn't wear suits. Right. Where I'm like him, man, I need to get into it, you know? <laughs> while I'm young I want to be able to move (laughs) yes oh and and move you are doing and just with uh, one more thing just about um women's history month you know we're in it and it should be every month I mean as far as I'm concerned uh but with that being said in the SEC uh you have so many different representations for our African-American women as Mm -hmm. leaders Mm -hmm. What do you feel is the importance of that? And what is that sisterhood like within the conference of head coaches? You know, you can't be what you can't see. You know, I I, I remember that's why representation matters, because I think every person, every child, every human being should have, should be able to aspire to be whatever they want to be. Right. It is very difficult to do when you can't see it. Yes. You know, I remember watching Pat Summit saying, man, I was blown away. But when I saw Coach Stringer, I was like, holy smoke, I can do this. So when my players see me, even my white players, they understand that it is acceptable for Black leadership. Yes. And, and that's what Don is saying. She's not saying that white leadership is not good. She's saying black leadership is good too. You know what I'm saying? It's like Emmanuel Acho said, the reason why they say black lives matter because for so long, that wasn't, it it was like no one really heard it. Mm -hmm. So so that's why the movement came along the same because we're like, no, just in case you didn't hear, hear it, black lives matter too. And so the SEC uh, first of all, we're in the South. Okay, we're over Southern. Everybody know the history in the South. Yes. And, and to have a six now uh, African-American coaches, it is incredible because the majority of our players are African-American. Yep. And they don't only need to see coaches. They need to see ADs. They need to see you. They need to see officials. They need to see that they can achieve anything that they want that's what no ceilings means so you can't be what you can't see and that's why representation matters and our sisterhood in this conference is very strong well you can tell you can tell and and when you say no ceilings that's your hashtag for your team your your rallying my my brand yeah 
I love that too. And and with that, what are the what do the student athletes tell you or discuss with you or ask you about your experience as a strong black female leader? I mean, you're the ninth head coach at Ole Miss and the first African American female to do that. I think one of my proudest moments was being involved, and I only had a small part of helping change the state flag. Uh, the way my players looked at me um, and how proud they were, the way they posted it on social media. You know, you're not cool when you post your coach <laughs> on social media, but for them to post it like, yeah, my coach was there, you know, it is something that I would never uh, forget. And the experiences, them coming to my home. And, uh, you know, I live in a, uh, a golf community. So, you know, we have the country club. So sometimes when I have meals with them, I take them there. Right. And they're wow. so amazed, you yeah. know. So ex exposing them to that. And a lot of times they say, Coach, how can I get this? And, and, and I say, here's how, you know. Um, and here's why you deserve it. And here's why we need to be successful because we're talking about generational success. Yes. Um, and that is what it's about. Um, you know, it's been a lot of pain, Christy. It quickly, we're in March, so easily when you have sports, you forget. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> we went through two pandemics this yes. season. And uh, to live it and be in it, it's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of pain. Um, and I'm just glad that my players, I didn't have to be extra. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be, I just had to be me because I was going through it with them. Yes. You know? Yes. yes. What, what's the biggest thing that you've learned from being stretched that way as a coach? Uh, you know, one of the biggest things I've learned just in my profession uh, that, I, that I continue to push myself on is remembering the human aspect of the student athlete, yes. you know, and I don't, we don't, I don't always get it right. You know, uh, you know, one of my things is I want to be demanding. I don't want to be demeaning, but a lot of coaches aren't demeaning because they want to be sometimes we're human. We make mistakes, uh, but it's something that is consciously on my mind. Right. How am I lifting these women up? Women need to be lifted up. Yes. It is easy for us to be torn down. And so I check myself constantly, yo, are you lifting them up? Yeah, I may be disciplining them, but is it in love? Is it lifting them up or do, are they feeling beat down? And sometimes I get that wrong because I'm super passionate and I want to win, but, I, but I'm conscious of it. So I get it right more than I get it wrong as I've matured in my profession. Oh my goodness. I could talk to you for the rest of the day, but I know you have things to do with your yeah. team, getting them yeah. ready. And, you know, I, I just want to tell you that I certainly appreciate your time today and carving out this moment because it, it has just really inspired me to continue to, to lean into everything that, that I am doing. And you must, you, I, must, you must, so many people. Yes. So many people that you don't know you're impacting because when they turn on the TV and they see you, they can see what they can be. And that is what it's about. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that, that is so moving. And I certainly appreciate that. And I can say the same thing for you and what you were doing as a mom and yeah. as a coach. And I am truly grateful that the opportunity is there for yes. us yes. to be able to utilize the platform yes. that we have in that way. And, mm -hmm. and with that, I, I guess we have to end it. I All just right. really don't want to, <laughs> but coach, yo, yo, let McEwen, you are a blessing and you Thank are you. so special to our game and you are appreciated. Thank you so much for joining us today on Christie's court on the field of 68 network.